know about the new products at Sephora, that hot young thing on the market that just dropped last Friday. We know about that viral product on TikTok that everybody was talking about this year, but what about the classics? What about the tried and trues? What about the holy grails that people keep buying year after year? What about my luxury favorites that are worth the money? That is what this video is about, friends. I'm gonna be walking you through my favorite products of all time at Sephora. Yes, I tried to narrow it down. I know this video might be a little bit on the long side, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. Let's get into it. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well, and I hope you are ready for some more Sephora VIB sale recommendations. Last week, if you missed it, I posted another video where I talked about all of the new makeup that was released this year that I recommend that you check out in the sale that is starting this week. But that's not what this video is going to be about. In this video, as I mentioned, we are talking about my all-time holy grails in every category. We're talking fragrance, we're talking skincare, we are talking eyeshadow palettes, foundations, everything is going to be in this video. And if you are new here, welcome friend. My name is Sophia and I'm a complete luxury beauty addict and I upload new videos just like this one every single week with a specific focus on luxury beauty and whether or not the products are worth it. So if that is your jam, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And as a quick reminder, guys, all the products that I mentioned in this video, they're going to be linked in the description box down below. If you would like to support my channel this holiday season, shopping through my links does earn me a small commission and it all goes back to supporting this channel so I can create more content for you guys. And without further ado, let's get into my holy grails. All right, party people, let's get into these favorites. I'm going to go through each of these category by category, more or less in the order that I would apply them to my face when I'm doing my makeup. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to chat about a couple of bonus categories that I get a lot of questions about. So like the Sephora brushes, the creme de la mer, the Dyson Airwrap, the LED face mask. I'm going to talk about my thoughts on all of those at the end of this video, so make sure you keep on watching. Starting off with foundations. I have three holy grails that I wanna share with you guys. The first one is from Tom Ford. It's pretty expensive, so it's good to get a discount on this one. This is the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. Talk about perfect skin when you're in a pinch. This is so quick and easy to use. I remember when I was buying this for the first time, years ago at my local Sephora, the sales associate tried to talk me out of it. She's like, oh, it's a little bit like too rich. It doesn't really set down. This was back in the years when matte makeup was really popular. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to her guys because this foundation stick is so good. Mm, chef's kiss perfection. It's really nice and moisturizing on my skin. If you're new here, I do have dry skin, but I think that this can work for a lot of skin types as well. It's really easy to just quickly draw on your face, take a little buffer brush, just kind of buff it in real quick and you're done. Like when I'm in a rush, when I have to film a video real quick in the morning before work, if I'm getting ready for work, this is the type of product that I use. If you travel a lot and you want something super travel friendly, this is really good for that as well. And I think part of the magic of this foundation stick is that it is so blurring. So even if you just use a little bit, it still looks so, so good on the skin. I feel like you can get a light coverage if you sheer it out, but then you also can get a pretty good like medium to maybe full coverage if you layer it up as well. And I know it's pretty expensive, so it is worth getting it in the sale. The next recommendation that I have for you guys is the foundation that I'm wearing on my face today. This is the Pat McGrath Foundation. I know a lot of you guys can get better deals on the Pat McGrath website, but hey, I'm sharing my all-time favorites with you guys here. This is sold at Sephora, and very often I do just go to Sephora and get it because it's easy and convenient for me. I wear light number six. By the way, I'll put all of the shades and things that I mention in this video and whatever I wear in the description box so you don't have to remember them as I go through this video. Don't worry, just listen to the video. You don't have to write anything down. I wear light number six. This is still probably my favorite foundation ever. I'm not going to lie. I recently took this with me on my vacation. I have a little bottle of it that I sort of decanted into, wore it every single day when I was in Paris. I was like, man, this is good. Man, this foundation, it's so good. The wear time 
is amazing. It's still really light on the skin. And my preference for foundations, guys, just full disclosure, I like something that's kind of brightening and illuminating. Just like with the Tom Ford, it's really blurring. You get the same thing with the Pat McGrath as well. This is a makeup artist foundation. It's really easy to apply in layers. You can do one layer if you want something kind of sheer, and then you can build it up just where you need to, to get the perfect look. And you know, it doesn't, it's not like a super dewy foundation, but for whatever reason, it never gets dry and crusty on my face. I still really, really like this one. And then the third one that I wanna share with you guys is a more recent favorite. I got this one, I think in the Sephora sale last October, October of last year. This is the House Labs Foundation. This one is super good as well if you have dry skin. I feel like it actually is very similar to the Pat McGrath, but it's a little bit juicier if that makes sense. It gives a really beautiful kind of plump look to the skin. It's equally as blurring. I feel like it's just a little bit more moisturizing. So if you have more mature skin, if your skin's very dehydrated this time of year, I would recommend looking at the house labs. It seems like a lot of people really, really like this foundation. I know it's not gonna work for everybody, but the feedback that I've gotten is that this is a bestseller. It's a really good foundation to check out and definitely one of my new holy grails within the past year. Next up friends, we have concealers and I narrowed it down to two holy grails. I'm really trying to narrow it down here because I have a lot of favorites. I narrowed it down to two concealers that are my all-time faves at Sephora. The first one is from Dior. It is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I didn't have this for a little bit because I finished my last one and then they reformulated it and I was a little bit nervous if maybe they had ruined it. I waited a while before buying it, finally got it, and it's still amazing, guys. I cannot tell the difference. I don't even know how I went that long without this concealer. I have fallen back in love with this concealer. It's gotta be one of the best luxury concealers on the market, like ever. It's so beautiful and brightening, but it's not like too reflective and sparkly. You definitely can use it all over the face. It's not so dewy and serum-y where it's like, oh, I can't like layer anything on top of it or it slips and slides. It really like stays in place and perfects anything that you put it on top of, but it also doesn't dry my skin out because not only do I have dry skin, but particularly on my eyelids or just around my eyes, it is very, very dry and my eyes are very sensitive. I will get hives and or eczema. So I don't get any irritation from this concealer. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is actually the concealer that I usually recommend to like friends and family who don't know a lot about makeup, they're not makeup enthusiasts, but they wanna buy something nice, just one good concealer, or it's like their wedding or something like that. And they're like, Sophia, help me, what do I buy? This is the concealer that I recommend. The other Holy Grail concealer that I wanna give a shout out to is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer. And this one is exceptionally glowy and reflective. This is the one that I would specifically recommend if you have a lot of like darkness or maybe discoloration under the eyes because this one has mica in it and it's going to do a lot of work blurring those under eye circles. I have heard, however, the only downside to this is that once you get to some of the darker shades, some people say they notice that sparkliness maybe a little bit more than they would want. So just kind of keep that in mind, guys. This one, it is very, very glowy. And if that is not what you're looking for, maybe stay away. But other than that, I think it's a really good concealer. It's very moisturizing, maybe a little bit more moisturizing than the Dior it has more of like a, a creamy consistency. So if you have dry skin and you're very concerned about under eye circles, this is probably the one that I would go to first. Powders, specifically setting powder. I'm only gonna say one guys, it's the Hourglass Ambient Light Finishing Powders. I don't use a ton of loose powders all the time. I mostly will reach for ones that are pressed. And if you couldn't tell from my preferences in the foundation and concealer categories, I really, really like the glowy powders. I like things that are going to blur. The Guerlain Meteorites are really good, but I think my favorite ones just kind of for on the go and day to day are definitely the Hourglass Finishing Powders. The one that I like to wear the most is called Dim Light. Some of you guys who are a little bit more fair, you've told me that that is a little bit too dark for you, but they have a lot of different shades now, and I'm happy to report they've improved the shade range 
over the years. So I feel a little bit better recommending it to you guys. So the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Setting Powders, those are definitely my favorites. And they also come in mini sizes as well, guys. And the mini sizes take forever to use up. I use one every single day for kind of blending around my eyeshadow. And I've hit Pam, but I still got a long way to go. Next up, we have one of my favorite categories, which is bronzers. And I allowed myself a couple more in this category. The first one is the Tom Ford Terra bronzer. I mentioned this in another video recently because I was demoing this bronzer for you. And I told you, this has become almost like my holy grail gold standard benchmark for bronzers when I'm comparing other new products on the market in my product reviews because this bronzer specifically in the shade Terra, it is the perfect neutral shade that just works for so many people. Again, I'm trying to think here of products that a lot of people are going to like. What would I recommend to my mom? What would I recommend to my sister or my best friend? These are the products, guys. And the Tom Ford Terra Bronzer is such a beautiful product. It blends across the face so well. It's a little bit glowy, you know, a little bit, but it's not sparkly or anything like that. I wouldn't lead you astray in the bronzer category. And you know what? If you have a warmer complexion, they also have another shade of this product as well that is a little bit warmer in tone. Now, if you want something that is maybe a little more buttery in consistency, I would highly recommend checking out the Gucci bronzer. Specifically, those of you who have a fair skin tone, I know a lot of you guys like the fair shade in this bronzer. It has a very unique kind of, um, almost like a peachy or pinky undertone that works really, really well for fair skin. So if you're somebody who maybe you've tried a lot of bronzers before and you just feel like maybe they look a little bit ashy or muddy or maybe orange, we don't want that. I would check out the Gucci bronzer in the shade Fair. If you have a deeper skin tone, they have other shades, but I think specifically the Fair shade of the Gucci bronzer is probably the most unique. Finally, when it comes to powder bronzers, because we're gonna talk about creams in just a second. Finally, I highly recommend the Guerlain Terracotta Light Bronzers. And it's called Terracotta Light because they're supposed to be a little bit more natural looking. If you guys take a look at this product, you'll notice you have some shades of brown in there, but you also have some shades of like peach or pink, depending on the shade that you choose. It's kind of like a blush and bronzer combo, if that makes sense. I actually have a full in-depth review of this product if you want to check it out. It's actually one of my most popular videos on my channel, so I'll make sure that I link that down below if you're trying to figure out what shade to get. This is such a nice bronzer for those of you out there who just want something super natural. Maybe you don't even use bronzer all that much, but you're like, oh, kind of want to add like a little something to the cheeks that looks like a natural flush. Use this. You can just put a little bit on. It's perfect. It's a very, very beautiful product. Now for creams, and these are kind of like, you can use them as bronzers, but you also can use them specifically as contour. I want to first recommend the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contouring Stick. I like to use the shade Biscuit. There are two other shades if you have maybe a warmer complexion or a deeper complexion. I really like the Biscuit shade because it is sort of neutral to a little bit cool tone. So it works really well for me, at least as a contour shade. So I like to go in with my bronzer all over the face. And then like I've done today, I just have the contour in the hollows of the cheeks. This product, first off, I mean, the packaging is amazing as the most beautiful magnetic packaging. Also, it just blends onto the face extremely effortlessly. If you guys saw my last get ready with me that I did with my mom, I think it was last year. We tried this on her. She tried it out and she loved it so much. We ordered it on the spot right after we were finished filming the video. She loves using it to kind of define her face. And if she can use contour, you can use contour too. It's so effortless. It never leaves that kind of dreaded line or streak on the face. It is a beautiful product. It's very expensive. Everything from Westman Atelier is very expensive, but honestly, I think it's worth it. Like, I don't think I could use anything else for contour. Other than, other than, and this is kind of like a more affordable option, the Rare Beauty Bronzing Sticks. These are actually really good. They're very, very good, especially if you want something 
and you're maybe a little bit more on a budget, as I mentioned. I like the one that's called Bright Side because it is a little bit more cool tone for contour. And then I like to use the one that's called Power Boost, more so as like a traditional cream bronzer. The price is great. The product is really great. The formula just kind of blends on. It's really, really nice. If you had to ask me which one do I like more, I think I would choose the Westman Atelier because it is just a little bit more luxurious. But once again, the Rare Beauty ones are also really good. And hey, they made it into this Holy Grails video. The next category is blush. And speaking of Rare Beauty, we got to talk about the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes. These are a bestseller at Sephora for a reason. And I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I was so late to the game on these. Why did I wait to try these? Everybody was telling me that these were good. And I didn't try these out until earlier this spring when they released some new shades. And boy, guys, these are so beautiful. I love the price point on these. It's a little bit lower than some of the other luxury brands at Sephora, but it's still really worth it. The quality is amazing. These are pretty pigmented. So with some of the shades, you have to be a little bit careful, but that means that one little tube is gonna last you a very, very long time. I like the fact that these come in both kind of like a dewy, glowier formula and then also a matte formula. I like both formulas personally, but I think the more popular one is definitely the dewy one. I think my two favorite shades so far have been Virtue, which is kind of like a peachy nude, and then Grateful, which is like the bright dewy red, which actually is not as bright as you think it would be. It's so, so beautiful for kind of like that romantic flush. I love this formula. My other favorite cream blush at Sephora are the Glossier Cloud Paints. I've been using these for years and finally they are sold at Sephora. These are the most user-friendly cream blushes ever and they actually have a pretty good price point as well compared to maybe like the Charlotte Tilbury cream blushes. I really like those but you really can't beat the price of the Glossier ones. I think that my two favorite colors are probably Dusk which is a really beautiful nude and I also really like Storm which is kind of like a plum mulberry type of color and I really like to mix them together as well. They look like little tubes of paint so you can kind of put them on the back of your hand, mix them up, create your own shades, you can collect all the colors. They're so so beautiful and you know what they did rank very very high in my cream blush ranking video so check that out. I have a cream blush ranking video and a powder blush ranking video that you guys really like. So if you're trying to figure out what to get amongst maybe a lot of different blushes, check that one out. But these two are my favorite cream blush formulations. For powder blush, I also picked two. The first recommendation that I have are the Hourglass blushes. There's a lot of really good powder blushes at Sephora, but what I really like about the Hourglass ones is that they really give you that beautiful, fresh kind of lit from within glow. They are not sparkly or chunky or anything. I think that these work if you have more mature skin, if you have pores or texture, anything like that. I haven't noticed that the Hourglass blushes highlight that. They're not like highlighters or blush toppers. They are actually glowy blushes. And I like that they are a little bit more subtle maybe than other formulations. They're super user-friendly. Like you kind of can't mess it up. You have to really go out of your way if you want to overdo it. That's why I like these. You never get that dreaded streak or splotch whenever you go in with an hourglass blush. My favorite color, if you can't tell, I really like purple and plum blushes. I really like nude blushes. The one that I really like that comes in a single is called At Night and it's perfect for fall and winter, but there's a lot of other really like neutral subtle ones as well. And just like I said with the finishing powders, try getting a mini because it's going to take you forever to get through that blush and you don't have to pay as much for the little tiny mini one. And then my last blush recommendation, which you won't be surprised by if you are subscribed to my channel, are the Gucci blushes. I love these. They come in a beautiful, silky, elegant, demi-matte formula. And the packaging is so cute as well. I don't know, I just love the beautiful weighty packaging. And they also expanded the colors earlier this year. So if you guys check out my reviews, you can see swatches of all of the colors. My favorite shades are definitely Rosy Beige, which is one of the most perfect beige neutral blushes that I have in my collection. I also really like Warm Berry. Surprise, surprise. I like the berry shade. And I also really like True Pink, which is just such a beautiful, fresh, bright pink that they released earlier this year to go along with all of the pink blushes that were being released from every brand. But you know what? I think that one from Gucci, 
that is my favorite pink blush. Next up, we have highlighters. And of course, I have to talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wands. These are my favorite liquid highlighters. They are so beautiful. They give such a nice glow to the face. If you don't like something that's super glowy, maybe stay away from these. But I love the formula because you're seeing a trend here. It's very user-friendly. It blends out so nicely along the cheek. And I think the shade that I tend to use the most is peach gasm because I like the fact that it's kind of like a highlighter and blush hybrid. I almost use it like a blush topper where I'll kind of blend it along my cheekbones. But depending on what shade you get, it might be a little bit more blushy or it might be a little bit more of like a traditional highlight shade. For example, the shade Spotlight. If you guys are having trouble figuring out what shade you want to get, I do have a full shopping guide of I think all of the shades, maybe all but one. So you can check that out on my channel. Hopefully that will be helpful. But in general, highly recommend this product. And I know it's a little bit expensive. So once again, it's good to get the 20% off, the 15% off in the Sephora sale. Now my favorite powder highlighters are definitely from Dior. First, we have the Dior Backstage Highlighting Palettes. I feel like a lot of times these are out of stock and I get nervous that Maybe they're gonna be reformulated. Maybe they are getting discontinued. I certainly hope not because I love these palettes. I love how illuminating these are. And you guys know, I love a good face palette because you're getting four shades in one. And specifically, if you get the 001 Universal, you have one shade that's a little bit more like a blush topper. You have two very basic highlighter shades that you can kind of mix together, use on their own. And then you also have the darker kind of bronzy shade where that's a little bit dark for me, but I really like to use it as an eyeshadow. So I play around with that from time to time as well. If you have a deeper skin tone, that's going to be a really beautiful highlighter for you. But in general, I really like the palettes from the Dior Backstage Collection. If you don't want to mess around with that many shades though. I totally get it if you're like, I really would only use one of those shades. Then let me point you towards the Dior Forever Couture Luminizers. This is another product where I have every single shade and I have shopping guides for you guys as well. So if you want to see swatches, you can check out that video. These are such a beautiful, elegant go-to highlighter. Once again, just like with the Dior Forever Concealer, this is the kind of highlighter where if one of my family members was like, oh, I just need a really good standard luxury highlighter that looks very beautiful, I tend to point them in this direction. I think the shade that's probably the most universal is probably the 04 Golden shade. I'll list it down below. Hopefully they have that one in stock, but the pink one is also very popular. All of the shades are very nice, but those are the two that I see most people purchasing if they just wanna get one shade. Next, we're gonna talk about eyeshadow. I know that this is a very popular category when it comes to the Sephora sales. So I have a couple recommendations for you guys, and we're gonna start off with my favorite eyeshadow singles. And believe it or not, these are from the Sephora collection. These are the Sephora Colorful Eyeshadows. And in fact, a lot of you guys recommended these to me. So thank you for the recommendation. And don't forget that during the Sephora sale, the Sephora collection products are 30% off for everybody. I have to be honest with you guys, like there's not that much from the Sephora collection that I've either tried or I've really liked, but I really do like this product. So this is gonna be the one thing from the Sephora collection that I would say is Sophia approved that I regularly purchase for myself. This is almost a more affordable dupe for the Hourglass Scattered Light Shadows. I really like those as well, but I know they can be kind of expensive, as can the Urban Decay Moon Dust Shadows. I highly recommend checking out the Sephora Colorful Eyeshadow Singles first because they have some really good ones in there. Now, if you are new to this channel, you might not know that I have a very unfortunate obsession with Tom Ford eyeshadow quads. Unfortunate for my wallet, not unfortunate for my enjoyment, however, because I really do like Tom Ford eyeshadow quads, or at least most of them. And I do think it's good to kind of think about picking up one of these in the sale because they're $90. And if you're gonna treat yourself to something, treat yourself when you can get the 15 or 20% off. Now, if you're trying to figure out which Tom Ford quad you should get, I would recommend checking out my Tom Ford ranking video where I ranked 22 Tom Ford eyeshadow quads. I've since then added two more. Don't come for me, don't come for me. Or no, three more. Ah, I'm 
have it, I've added three more. Okay, I have 25 now. But 22 of those, you can see me rank in that video. And you can get a sense for which ones I like more than others, which ones I recommend. And there's swatches of all of them in that video also. But in general, a rule of thumb that I have for you all is that I would stick to the classics. I would stick to the shades that are the most popular. If you are kind of nervous about splurging on a Tom Ford quad, they are classics for a reason. New dip, honeymoon, those types of quads, things that work for a lot of people, especially the wet dry formula. That's what I would kind of point you towards first. The creme formula is also really beautiful, but it is, it's a little bit of a creamier touch. So think about what kind of, you know, formulation you prefer. That's what I would point you towards are the classics. You might've noticed in my other Sephora recommendations video where I talked about new products on the market, you know, what's good, what's not. I didn't mention any Tom Ford quads, right? Because I don't really like most of the new ones that are being sold at Sephora right now. So I would take a look at the classics and if you're still not sure, take a look at the ranking video. The Guerlain Ombres G eyeshadow quads. I'm also very fond of these. I have a lot of reviews of the colorways here on my channel. And my favorite colorway, which I'm wearing on my eyes today, is Majestic Rose. This color story is so lovely and romantic. It's probably one of my favorite pink palettes ever because yes it does have kind of like that standard pink shade but it's balanced out with a beautiful soft brown there's a mulberry shade in there as well that kind of just adds a little bit of like subtle romantic depth and then there's a beautiful sparkly pink topper shade that you can use in the center of the eye just to create a little bit of brightness and illumination it's a really beautiful formula as well. If you've never tried the Guerlain eyeshadow quads, they have this really nice kind of airbrushed look to the eye. It doesn't highlight any texture. It's kind of similar to the Tom Ford wet dry formula, except I think they're a little bit more pigmented. I think Tom Ford wet dry tends to be a little bit softer. Check out my review of the Majestic Rose Quad if you wanna see some comparisons of the different finishes of all of these luxury eyeshadows because I do a lot of comparisons in my review. But in general, I really, really like this formulation. I'm very, very fond of them. I think that they are worth the money. And the new seasonal ones that they come out with every year have really beautiful limited edition packaging as well. And then lastly, I'm kind of putting all of these within a bucket. It's the Natasha Denona Midi palettes. The Midi palettes are my favorite size. I know a lot of people like the mini ones, but I've sworn off collecting those because I just keep reaching for the Midi palettes. I like the number of shades that you get, and I like that you always get kind of a mixture of different finishes and formulations in the Natasha Denona Midi palettes. And you know, I was thinking of including a bunch of other palettes in this video, like the Charlotte Tilbury ones, which I really like, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what, in a lot of cases, I would just reach for Natasha Denona, to be perfectly honest with you. I think she has one of the best formulations on the market. Her palettes are about $65, so that is expensive, but you do get a lot of shades for that price, and a lot of the color stories are very wearable. She just came out with the I Need a Nude, which I talked about in my other video, but the Retro Palette, the Glam Palette, these are all classics that work for so many people. I think that my favorite ones are definitely the Sunset, the Love Palette, which I know is limited edition. I don't think they have it on Sephora anymore. And I really like the Bronze Palette as well. I tend to like the more colorful ones. I wore the Yucca one yesterday, and that one is just so fun to play with. So I like the more colorful ones a little bit more, but definitely the most popular are the Glam, the I Need a Nude, and probably the Retro. One last thing, friends, before I jump to the next category, you might have noticed that I didn't mention the Dior eyeshadow palettes in this recommendations video. If you guys missed my previous reviews, Dior recently reformulated their palettes at the beginning of this year. And it's not that I don't recommend the reformulated ones. It's just that they're a little bit less consistent than they were before. When I take a look at the shades that they have at Sephora, at least out of the ones that I've tried, I don't see my favorite palettes there. And that's the reason why I didn't include them in this video. My favorite ones right now are available at other retailers and on the Dior site. And those are Rose Tool, the Khaki Palette, and Balmasque. And I have reviews of all of those. So 
I don't really see any on Sephora that I would say totally get these. And I just wanted to say that because I know that both myself and a lot of you guys are huge fans of Dior. For eyeliners, guys, there's two that I highly recommend. I already talked about the new Dior ones in my last video. And the two that I have for this video are number one, the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliners. I know, Urban Decay, right? I don't really use that much from Urban Decay, but guys, their eyeliners are still bomb, and I've tested so many eyeliners. These are still some of the best, and my gauge for that is usually, you know, are they easy to kind of manipulate, smudge, and apply? Like, are they creamy enough where they don't tug at the eyelid? And then once they set down, do they last all day? And these do and what i like about urban decay as well is that they have so many fun colors like you can get just a classic matte brown you know demolition is my favorite one it's just like a dark brown and it goes with everything it's great for kind of a smoky eye look especially if you don't want it transferring down you know below your eyelids and then you look tired at the end of the day but they also have fun colors they have shimmer finish glitter finish there's so much to choose from these are still so, so good. They're still a bestseller. They're probably keeping Urban Decay alive, that and their setting spray, to be honest with you, and maybe the Moon Dust eyeshadows. But I think that this is probably, it is my favorite product from Urban Decay. The other ones that I want to recommend are from Lancome. These are the Lancome Drama Liquid Pencils. These are also very long wearing, very elegant. They go on very easily, and they have some very elegant colors in addition to kind of some of the classic colors they also have sen sparkles which is a really pretty kind of like sparkly blue it looks way chicer than you guys would think and then they also have parisian night which is a little bit more of like a darker navy blue so great for kind of like a night out or even for a day look if you want to add just a little pop of color but you don't want anything too too crazy these are really good as well. Now, when it comes to mascaras, I do have to give a quick disclaimer here because we all have different preferences. I prefer something that's a little bit more like lengthening and separating, still voluminous, but a lot of like length and separation, something very fluttery. And I also need something very long wearing. I don't really like traditional formulas that kind of flake off a little bit. I really like tubing formulas because my eyes are sensitive. I feel like they last really long and then they also come off very easily as well. And my three favorites are without a doubt, the Cali Ray Mascara, the Tower 28 Mascara, and the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. Now, what is the difference between all of these? I would definitely say that the Hourglass, that one gives you the most volume. That one I can really layer on if I'm doing a more dramatic type of eye look and it still gives me that long wear and all the things that I just said. I would say that the Tower 28, that one is probably a little bit more lengthening. It gives really nice separation because of the shape of the brush. And I also think if you want a little bit more curl from your lashes, that is the way to go because the brush is a little bit more curved. I'm actually wearing that one on my eyes today. And I wanna let you guys know they're coming out with a new brown shade in that formulation. They just sent it to me in PR. So thank you so much, Tower 28, for sending it to me. It's one of my favorite mascaras. So I'm really excited that they have kind of like the softer brown color. So make sure you look out for that on Sephora. I'm not quite sure when it's going to drop. And then finally, guys, the Cali Ray. I like this one. Probably if you have smaller lashes, this one has the thinnest, most slender brush, so you can really get every single lash. It's definitely more of a lengthening formula, but I really like how detailed I can get with this. I can just keep adding more and more layers and then you get a lot more volume. For brows, the number one product that I keep coming back to is definitely the Kosas Brow Pop. I believe I use medium brown. Once again, I'll, I'll list all of the colors that I mentioned in this video in the description box. I really like this because the brush is like thin enough where I can get, you know, some detail work, but also not so thin where I feel like I'm just sitting there like drawing for an eternity because the fact of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, I'm just gonna brush it out no matter what. This is not a situation where I'm drawing on like every single little hair. I would probably recommend the Glossier Brow Flick for that. That's my favorite brow pen at Sephora. But when we talk about just like all around brow product, I really like the brow pop from Kosas. Lips, we finally made it to lips. We're getting towards the end, friends. Are you having fun? Are you still with me? I hope. The first recommendation that I have 
are from YSL. They are the Rouge Volupte Shine Lipsticks and also the YSL Candy Glaze. I always mention these. I've recommended these a couple of times in my Sephora videos so far because they're just so great for every day. The Rouge Volupte Shine, actually, this is what I'm wearing on my lips today, and I could use a top up, so I brought it right here. This is Rose Dentel, and you'll see it's a really nice hydrating balm that adds such a beautiful wash of color. Very, very hydrating. This is the kind of thing you can just toss in your bag, bring along with you on the go. You don't need a mirror. I know there's a lot of really nice hydrating colored balms, but for whatever reason, these are my favorite. I really like the shades. I know the Dior ones are really good. I know there's a lot of other good ones, but these are my favorite. And my favorite shades are Rose Dentel, Orange Carousel, and Burnt Zelige. Those are the best ones. Burnt Zelige, unfortunately, is always sold out. So see if it comes back in stock during the sale or maybe after the sale. I would even pay full price for it because I like it that much. The Candy Glaze formula, that one is just more high shine. They both have kind of like the same scent, similar packaging, but that's more of like lip gloss in a stick. If you want more of that lip gloss kind of look to your lips, that's the one that I would go with. And actually, I even like the clear non-tinted one of the Candy Glaze as just like a regular lip balm, but it gives me like a lot of juicy shine. Now I mentioned these next ones in my last video because they did come out with some new shades for holiday, but I'm gonna talk about them again here. It's the Dior Attic Lip Maximizers. These are plumping lip glosses, so they do have a little bit of like that minty tingliness. It doesn't last that long, maybe lasts for like, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes and then it dissipates. So if you don't like plumping, these might not be for you, but I'm very fond of them. I like the minty smell and the tingle, and I specifically like the ones that are have a little bit more of like a glittery finish, especially the ones that are labeled as holographic, hollow lavender, hollow silver, those are really beautiful. I also like the new pure copper shade that they came out for this holiday. What else? I really like all of them. I don't have a single one that I don't like, but I really am fond of the glittery finish because in addition to kind of like that slight irritation that you get from plumping formulas, the glittery finish kind of reflects with the light. So it gives you kind of that lip filler look almost, but in maybe a more natural way. They're very, very good lip glosses. They are my favorite. For classic lipsticks and lip liners, just go to. I like the Charlotte Tilbury ones, the Matte Revolution formula, and also her just standard lip liners. You can't go wrong with them. I still really like the formula. My favorite shades for the lip liners are definitely Iconic Nude and Pillow Talk, although she has some other really good ones that are more like brown tone. She has a really beautiful red as well. And for the lipsticks, my favorite, I think it's Catwalking. I showed you guys this lipstick in my recent Holiday Trends video for, I think it was the Latte look. It is the perfect nude lipstick. Catwalking is such a good shade. Pillow Talk is good as well. It's a little bit pinkier as opposed to the nude. But yeah, I don't know. You can't go wrong with the Matte Revolution. I know a lot of people don't like matte formulas because maybe they think they are too drying. But personally, I don't feel like my lips ever get dry with the Charlotte Tilbury one. So for me, it's a big thumbs up. And finally, friends, for a lipstick formula that is maybe just a little bit more lightweight, more like balmy feeling, almost like you're applying a chapstick, I highly recommend the Merit Signature Lightweight Lipsticks. These are my favorite product from Merit and still one of my favorite lip products from Sephora. I really, like I said, I like that these are a little bit more casual almost. Like if you don't feel like you wanna commit to a full lipstick, especially if you wanna go for like a red or more of a plum or a brown or something and you just can't be bothered, which very often is how I feel because I work two jobs and I'm very busy all the time. This is the kind of thing that I will go for. Now my two favorite colors are definitely Lavenue, which is kind of like a berry brown. So good, I wore that one when I was on vacation in Paris and I felt tray chic and then i also really like the color that is called fashion which is sort of like a muted fuchsia maybe more of like a berry fuchsia which is really nice if you want to wear it kind of on its own or with just like a single eyeshadow something very plain on the eye gorgeous gorgeous shades all right friends we've made it to that point in the video where we're going to talk about the miscellaneous products that i get asked about a lot or that i just want to recommend to you give you a little bit more insight on so that hopefully you can spend your money wisely we're talking fragrance devices skincare a little bit of hair care and that kind of stuff and i'm going to start off 
with creme de la mer because if you don't know i have an unfortunate obsession with creme de la mer it's very expensive my wallet doesn't like me for it but my skin likes me for it because it just jives so well with my skin in the winter a lot of people ask me sophia is it worth it should i pick it up and what I like to say is, if you have very dry skin, if you have rosacea, if you have a lot of redness, if at the end of the day in the winter or whenever during the year, you know, you have a lot of dry patches on your face and you really feel like you've tried every other more affordable option, then try the creme de la mer because I don't really need it in the summertime. Like I'm good, I have other moisturizers that are more affordable, even ones from the drugstore. You guys have seen my skincare video. I link it in the description of every video, by the way, if you wanna see what I do to my skin. I use a lot of drugstore products and kind of mix them with dermatologist recommended ones. Creme de la Mer is kind of like the most fancy thing that I use but I only use it in the winter time because that's when I really, really need it. If you're just kind of fine right now with what you have, I really don't think you need to splurge on it. It's really if you need the calming, like soothing ingredients, and if you have very, very dry and dehydrated skin. So I don't want you guys to waste your money if you don't have to. Another product that I own that I often get a lot of questions about is the Dr. Dennis Gross LED face mask. This is kind of expensive. It's upwards of $400. I think they might have increased the price a little bit this year. Everything is increasing in price, guys. It's very expensive. So a lot of you ask me, is it worth it? What does it do? And let me tell you guys, I really like it. I think it is worth it. I think that it helps a little bit with my redness and my rosacea, kind of evens out my complexion a little bit. I don't have that much acne anymore, so I can't speak to it drastically improving my acne. But for me, it's worth it. It's worth for that little bit of kind of redness control. But here's what I'm gonna tell you. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. You need to be able to use it like every day or every other day. You can't just like pop this on for 10 minutes and expect this to like erase all of your wrinkles and cure all of your acne and your rosacea and all that kind of stuff. If you're not the kind of person that's going to put this on, for 10 minutes a day or maybe maybe every other day, then I don't think I would recommend getting it. I like to pop it on when I'm checking my emails in the morning, if I'm editing videos as I'm waking up. You can even like do chores while you wear it. You can fold laundry and all that kind of stuff because it stays on your face really well. I don't really like the ones from other brands that are kind of like foldy because they don't stay on my face. I've tried to give it to like two or three other family members and nobody likes that one. <laughs> nobody likes that one. We like, this one, okay? I really enjoy it. It doesn't cover up this part of the face right here. So if you have acne, maybe hormonal acne along your chin, just know it's not gonna cover that up. That's probably the biggest complaint that I hear in the reviews and from my subscribers. It's not gonna be as good as wearing sunscreen every day. It's not gonna be as good as eating healthy. It's not gonna be as good as you know not smoking and living a healthy lifestyle. It's not gonna be as good as Botox, guys. It's not gonna be that transformational. It's kind of like for everyday maintenance of like your redness and wrinkle prevention and you have to invest in it. So. If that's worth it for you, then it's worth the $400 or whatever it is, minus the 15 or 20% in the Sephora sale. I really like it, but I just wanna set expectations. It's not gonna be like an instant transformational type of experience. The Dyson Airwrap. I always get a lot of questions about this. I finally bought this product a year ago. And so I wanna share my thoughts. And once again, guys, this is just my experience. I know a lot of people like the Dyson Airwrap, but personally, I really don't like it. I think it's probably the most overhyped, overpriced beauty product, beauty tool that I've ever purchased. I do kind of regret it because I literally never use mine. I have very fine, thin, limp hair with zero body, but it does hold a curl. As you can see, my hair holds a curl pretty well. And with different types of like hairsprays and texturizing sprays, I can get like a little bit of like volume to my hair. In fact, a lot of you guys ask me like, oh, what did you use to do your hair? Do you use the Dyson Airwrap? I don't use the Dyson Airwrap. I just use like a $40 curling iron and that works perfectly fine for me. I got the Dyson Airwrap hoping that I could create more of like a salon blowout type of style. But what I found is that it takes so gosh darn long to do my hair, like 45 minutes compared to like 10 to 15 minutes and that's not even if i'm like pinning up the curls 
I remember I really tried to give this my best shot. Like I bought all the products that you guys recommended. I tried the mousse. I tried the sea salt spray. I did it like this. I like cooled it. I pinned it. I wore my curls pinned up for like three hours, took them out. They looked really nice for a video. And then legit within two or three hours, I remember my boyfriend came out and he was like, oh, what happened to your hair? Oh, it doesn't seem like that product is worth it. I was like, oh my God, he doesn't even think that it's worth it. Legit, I cannot get the style to last. And it's not meant for curling your hair. It's meant for a salon style blowout. You can curl your hair with a large barrel curling iron, pin them and get the same look that you see all of like, the hair models and like the 22 year olds that do the reviews like it just doesn't work for my lifestyle i don't have the time to sit there and like let it dry and let it cool for like 60 seconds for each piece of hair sorry i'm like going on a rant here but i just really think it's overhyped yeah i think i can just get the same thing with the curling iron it's going to be more damaging for my hair but hey I just like don't really I just like don't really have the time I could you know put my hair up if I don't want to damage it so unfortunately it's not really for me I still use it to do like a quick dry or maybe to do like the front pieces of my hair if I'm doing like a chic bun or if I have like a special event it looks really nice but it just takes way way too long and I was hoping that the product would be a little bit more revolutionary specifically as it relates to cooling the hair. I think if it did a faster job of actually cooling and setting the hair, then we would be good. So call me Dyson when you've figured it out. But for me, I just like don't recommend it for the price. Okay, we're gonna jump back to a positive note. I'm gonna leave you guys with my three favorite fragrances at Sephora. The first two are from Tom Ford. I'm a big Tom Ford fan. And I think my favorite Tom Ford fragrance, at least right now, is Soleil Neige. I picked this up in one of the Sephora sales Maybe the one from last year, I can't remember. I love this fragrance. It's so beautiful and feminine, but it also has a little bit of complexity to it. I'm reading the fragrance notes on the internet right now. The top notes are bergamot and carrot seeds. So you have a little bit of freshness at the top, but then the middle notes, you have a lot of white flowers, orange blossom, jasmine, rose, Turkish rose. So you have kind of the feminine flowers, but they're white flowers, or at least most of them. So you get that beautiful sultriness. It's a little bit deeper and richer, really nice for kind of the fall and winter. But honestly, I really like this fragrance all year round. There is a bit of softness to it. The base notes are benzoin, vanilla, and the labdamum. So there's a little bit of kind of like muskiness there, some vanilla. A lot of people like vanilla based scents. I wouldn't say it's like super cloying or anything. It is such a beautiful scent. I really never get tired of it. Go into Sephora, see if you can get a sample, see if you can spray a little bit on your wrist you're gonna be intoxicated. It's such a beautiful scent. The other one from Tom Ford that I really like is Tom Ford Ombre Leather. Now, if you've smelled a lot of the more expensive Tom Ford fragrances, or maybe if they're out of your price range and you're just like, I'm not gonna look at them, if they were too strong or too expensive for you, let me introduce you to Ombre Leather because this one gives you kind of the richness and the sultriness and like the, almost like the coziness, right? Because these scents are really good for autumn and winter that you get from like a leather-based fragrance, but there's just a really like sultry softness to it as well. It's a good unisex scent as well. Like it really works well for men and women and the price point is a little bit better as well and then finally guys one of my favorite fragrances ever which i know i've mentioned before but i'm gonna mention it again it is mugler's alien the sillage on this fragrance meaning like the waft of or like you know the aura of the fragrance that you kind of leave behind the trail of fragrance on this scent is so strong and alluring like you walk through the room and it's almost like just like the name like you are an alien goddess from another world that's what this smells like if you also like white flowers and something a little bit sexy and more sultry like i do definitely check this one out i think probably the one that is best for day to day is probably the Soleil Neige and then the Ombre Leather I really like specifically for the fall and winter and also once again it's good for unisex and then for Alien that's what I wear when I'm like going out going out to dinner date night 
that kind of stuff. Editing Sophia here. I'm at the end of this video and I realized I didn't talk about makeup brushes and a lot of you guys asked me about that. So here are my thoughts. I don't really like buying makeup brushes at Sephora. I think most of them are not very good. They're not super high quality. I think the hourglass ones are really nice, but they're very expensive. I've heard good things about the Westman Atelier ones. I've never tried them. I just feel like they're overpriced. Like I've never even spent my own money buying the Westman Atelier brushes. The Sephora Pro line is pretty good. I have a couple of brushes from there, but like, now that I use the BK Beauty ones, I just have a really hard time going back to the Sephora Pro ones. They feel scratchy on my face now that I've kind of upgraded to other brands. So I would encourage you, if you really want nice brushes, check out BK Beauty, check out Refer. Both of those brands are having Black Friday sales. They're gonna have holiday deals in November. So you can get a little bit of a better deal and you can invest in something that's maybe a little bit higher quality. So there are some nice brushes at Sephora, but they really are not my favorites. Woo! So there you have it, friends. Those are all of my holy grail products at Sephora, my tried and trues. Once again, I would never lead you astray. I hope that this was helpful. We all have different preferences, however, so don't forget to sound off in the comments down below and let me know what are your holy grail products at Sephora? What are some of your favorite products, maybe in a certain category? Let us know because we're all looking for some good recommendations. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And if you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.